Welcome to Joystick, my friend. You will learn to solve the problem of Pascal Strangle using dynamic programming in this video. Pascal Strangle problem is a lead code problem, the link to which you can find in the description box. Let's dive into understanding first the problem statement. A Pascal Triangle is the one that is described in this figure. You can see that the tip of the triangle is made of one. Then the second row is made of two ones. From the third row onwards, the elements at the start and the end of the rows are ones and each of the middle number or the middle element is calculated as the sum of the two numbers directly above it. Thus two here is the sum of this one and this one. Three here in the fourth row is the sum of this one and two. Six here is the sum of these two threes and so on. Now given a variable num rows, Print the number of rows from the start to the value of the variable num rows of the Pascal strangle. That's the main ask. So if we assume that the num rows is 5, then we need to print the first 5 rows of the Pascal triangle. And this we are going to do using dynamic programming. And now we move towards understanding how to solve Pascal strangle using dynamic programming. To do this problem using dynamic programming, we'll make use of a standard table. The dimensions of uh, this table are going to be this. So if num rows is 5, then there are going to be 5 rows in this table and 6 columns. Why did I come up with this dimension? You will understand it in a moment. Alright, so our table is already created for this dimension. Now the Pascal triangle looks like an equilateral triangle. However, to solve this problem, we'll make it a right angle triangle. That's a little tweak, but it's going to give us the right answer. The tip of the triangle always has one. So what I'm going to do, I'll put one in this first row, but I'm going to place it in the column at index one. Okay. This is the column, which is at index one and I am placing one in it. You will come to know why I did that in a while. Now we move to row number two. We have seen that each element in the Pascal strangle is the sum of the elements just above it. How? Let me show it to you now. The current row is a subproblem to calculate which we'll make use of the previous subproblem and that previous subproblem is the row above. The algorithm will start calculating the value of this cell first, which will be the sum of the values present in cells directly above it. So which are the cells directly above this cell, this one and this one. So the value of this cell will be the addition of one and zero. So addition of zero and one is one. Hence, I'm going to populate one in this cell. Similarly, the value of this cell is going to be the summation of the cells directly above it, which is this cell and this cell. Again, it will be the addition of one and zero. The addition of 1 and 0 is 1. Hence, I am going to place 1 in this cell as well. The algorithm will stop here for this row. It need not proceed further because the second row of the Pascal strangle will contain only two elements. Now we move to row number 3 and we are going to start from here. The value of this cell will be the addition of this cell and this cell. So 1 and 0, the addition of 1 and 0 is 1. Hence, I'm going to populate one in this cell. Okay. Coming over to this cell, the two cells directly above it contain one only. The addition of one and one is two. Hence, I'm going to populate two over here in this cell. Over here, the two cells directly above it contain one and zero. The addition of one and zero is one. Hence, I'm going to populate one in this cell. Watch how magically the Pascal strangle is being formed. We move to row number four. Okay. That is indexed at three, but it's row number four of the Pascal strangle. We start from here. I will populate one over here because the addition of these two cells is one coming over here. The value of this cell will be the addition of this cell and this cell. So the addition of two and one is three. Hence, I'm going to populate three over here. Similarly, the value of this cell will be the addition of two and one, which is three again. Hence, I'll populate three over here. The value of this cell will be the addition of zero and one. Hence, I'm going to populate 
1 over here. Now coming to the final row. We are going to start from here. The value will obviously be 1 in this cell. The value of this cell will be the addition of 3 and 1. So it will be 4. The value of this cell will be the addition of 3 and 3. It will be 6. And the value of this cell will be the addition of 3 and 1, which will be 4. And the final cell of row number 5 will have the value as the addition of 0 and 1. So it will be 1, which will be populated in this cell. You can see the last cell of the last row ended in the last column of this matrix or the table. Why? Because we started from the column at index 1. Why we did so? We wanted to make use of this zero to calculate the value of the first element of each row. That's why we started from here. And that is why the number of columns we kept as num rows plus one. That means six in this case. That's it. Our table is completely filled. And these are the first five rows of the Pascal triangle. Let's now quickly check out the Java code to find the first five rows of the Pascal Strangle using dynamic programming. This is the Java program to print the first five rows of the Pascal Strangle. Over here, I have declared and initialized the variable num rows to five. Then I have declared and initialized a list of integer lists, which I have named Pascal. Then I have declared and initialized an internal list, which is basically going to store the first element of the Pascal Strangle. This line of code creates a two dimensional table with five rows and uh, six columns because num rows is five. Then I am inserting one as the topmost element of the Pascal Strangle in the cell with uh, row index zero and column index one. Then I am adding the topmost element to this internal list. And finally, I'm adding the internal list as the first list to this Pascal list. This Pascal list is going to contain all the lists which represent the rows of the Pascal strangle. After that, using this for loop, I am running through each row of this matrix. For each row, I am initializing an internal array list to store all the elements of that particular row. Next, there is an internal for loop that is running over the columns of the matrix. The key thing to note here is that uh, it starts at the column with index one and uh, runs for times one more than the index of the column. So you can see that uh, this internal for loop is starting from one and is going to run till i plus one. This is going to populate the number of elements equivalent to the number of that particular row of the Pascal strangle in that row of the table. This line of code does the main operation of calculating the elements. Each cell of the row is the sum result of the two cells above it. And finally, the calculated element is inserted into the internal list and after the calculation of a particular row of the table is over i am adding the internal list to my main pascal list and finally i am printing the main pascal list using this line of code these two for loops are printing the entire tp table i do this all the time in every dynamic programming problem i solve because doing this helps me visualize the metrics better and that also helps me in debugging the program that i'm coding now let's run the program and check the output all right there you go these are the first five rows of the Pascal strangle that this program has printed. And this is the matrix that uh, I was talking about. The same matrix we created moments ago when we solved this problem using the dynamic programming algorithm. With this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed learning the Pascal strangle problem using dynamic programming. Do let me know if you have any doubts in the comment section. I look forward to helping you with programming and algorithms. Only for this video, goodbye and take very good care of yourself.